The last few decades have seen so many people living in mental prisons, believing and living lies. And this must be a, a really hard way to live is when you live in a mental prison. You live a lie and you're looking for truth, but it's not in your cell because you put yourself in a cell. You can't get out and you're looking for the truth. You're looking for a key. You can't get out. The last two years have seen people become literal prisoners in their own homes all throughout Western culture. Literal prisoners. Don't go out. You got to stay in. Something's going to happen. Blah, blah. You've heard it all. Now, in Canada, we have a trucker strike. And nobody understands what it really means except for just a few people. And some people understand a little bit of what it means, but they can't go further because they're not allowed to. Because mentally and spiritually, they're stunted. Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. Before we begin, if you've not seen our latest videos, please do so. The last four to five videos have been some of the best that we've, we've done in a long time, incredibly strong and powerful, and many deep truths were shared. In fact, the last uh, video was incredibly powerful because it goes hand in hand with this short video about dividing people only to unite them to fight against us and how the UFO agenda will be the core to accomplish this. Now on to the Canadian trucking strike. So by now, you've all heard about the Canadian trucker strike, Freedom Convoy. Tens of thousands of truckers protest against vaccine mandates. Now, but what's really going on in Canada and what is this, what's really behind it? What's the real agenda? Now, I have quite a few Canadians in our ministry and I love them so much. In fact, I spoke with one yesterday, my brother Roy in Western Canada, somewhere near Calgary. I've learned from them about their nation and beliefs. Being from the States, I don't know a whole lot about Canada, but in the past couple of years, I've learned a whole lot about it. Canada has been teetering on socialism for decades, even before the United States. Canada was leaning towards atheism at a time when it hadn't really hit the United States the way it has now, with the, the lies about churches and about the God's chosen people. Canada was already there. Canada was also incredibly hard hit with the Muslim influx, almost as bad as Germany. Now, why do I say all this? Because it's incredibly relevant to a nation that is torn, fractured, and reeling from a lot already, not just the mandates. In 2017, to show you the mindset of the Canadian government, Canada announced a $650 million grant to help women's reproductive health worldwide. Now, this is just another way of saying, uh, let's make, you know, abortion, let's make it, let's pay for it. Let's, let's pay to have the children murdered. You see, Trudeau and his demons there were funding the murder of babies worldwide. And all of this is tied together with, with what's happening now. Many Canadians have felt like they have no voice, as is the case with all Western cultured nations. Now, this is, has led to Canadians in particular being vulnerable to any kind of help or pushback. However, now the hard truth that I put before you. A little over a year ago, most of you remember the big rally for Trump after he lost the selection because he didn't lose anything. The bankers told him, look, you have to go. We're going a different direction because there, there, there's no such thing as an election. But he was told you have to go. Now, we did two videos telling people this was a psychological operation and it was by the synagogue of Satan to make the people look bad. And indeed it was, and there was something darker, deeper, and even more compelling going on in D.C. and now in Canada with these trucker strikes and these protests. I understand Canadians and all people, for that matter, are tired of the big lie. Therefore, the truckers are out in masses and the people are coming out in droves to support them and millions of dollars has been sent and given in support. And now we're told this money is stolen. It is the Freedom Convoy. It is theater. It's smoke and mirrors. The trap has been sprung and I'll tell you exactly why it happened and why it failed and will fail miserably. This is not to demean your hope. It is to show you reality and what will be the real truth of how you fight an evil beast. You do not fight an evil beast with protest. Not initially. As with all things that are not built on the truth, 
the people of this world cannot understand the enemy. They cannot understand, nor will they accept the solution to fighting an enemy that has all the money, all the power, they control all the weapons. How do you fight such a beast? Surely it's crossed your mind that when you look at the enemy that we are facing, you, you would have to say, damn, they have everything. Yes, they have everything, but what do you have that they can never have? Now, until you tap into that, you're, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to accomplish anything, neither as a nation or as an individual or as a family, nothing. Until you tap into that power, you have nothing. All of this trucking strike is going to do is this. It's going to give fuel to the synagogue of Satan, the banking cartels, to shift the blame to those white folks, just as they did in D.C. back in January of 20. 21. It will also enable the banking devils to raise the prices in, the, in Canada and the United States on even more goods and services and blame the truckers and all those people that support them. It is smoke and mirrors and deception on a massive grand scale. It is psychological warfare at the highest level and most will never understand the evil behind it and they'll never understand why God allows this. Why will it fail? And why do all things seem to fail in this world when taking on evil? Let me tell you something, man. You cannot fight evil without God. You cannot fight evil without real faith in the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ. You cannot look for solutions to evil in any other place but the Almighty Father because he's not going to allow it. Do you really think God allowed Jesus Christ, a part of himself, to be butchered and murdered so the glory could be given to a bunch of mothers that don't love him? If you believe that, you don't know shit, man. You know not a zilch, nothing. You might as well check out. Check out, man, because you don't understand it. You're done. Now, if you don't like the way I'm, I'm preaching, you, you can go. But those who know the truth know that I tell the truth from God Almighty. I don't lie, cheat, or steal, and I tell it right. God can make or break nations. He can make a nation great. And he has made the United States and Canada at one time great. Because what was first? Jesus Christ, man. And he can make or break you as an individual. And all things have to go through Jesus Christ. You have a choice. You have a choice. One of the most interesting and fascinating parts to me before I close is this. When Jesus Christ encountered the devil, a being that he could have smacked around easily, Jesus and him had this conversation. Now, we don't know it all. But Jesus refuted the devil. And Jesus said this. In Matthew 4, you can read the whole account. But let me give you this one verse of what Jesus said to the devil. The devil's trying to tempt him. Now, here is, here is Jesus Christ com combating the epitome of evil. And what does Jesus Christ do it with? Matthew 4, 4. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see, we live by how God tells us to live. And when we live by that, we have God's ear. We have God's attention. We have his mercy. We have his power. We have his strength. And if that means you've got to pick up a sword and go to work, it's time to go to work. But you have God's blessing. So you can have one million people protesting. You can have a hundred thousand trucks. If you're not right with God, it means nothing. Zilch. You can take 100 people that really love the Father and Jesus Christ and they can make some noise because God will see to it that the noise is made. The devil don't fear the non-believer. The devil fears the believer. Here's the truth, brethren. The choices that we make today will determine our lives forever. God is not going to beg any of us for our loyalty and our love to him and to his son, Jesus Christ. However, if you take one step to him, he'll smile big at you and he'll pull you closer than you dare imagine. Again, the Canadian trucker strike is just a game being played by evil against a desperate and angry people. And I understand their desperation. I understand their anger. I understand their pain. In the end... The result is going to be this, more hatred against white Canadians and white Americans, and they're going to call you terrorists, and the price of food and gas and all products is going to go up. And this will anger the people even more and shut down any future movements. 
because this is how mental warfare works. And the reason it succeeds is because the people are not doing right by God Almighty. What do you think would happen? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you one question. You got all these people in Canada and they've got truckers coming. This isn't a big rally for Jesus Christ. No, man. It's a rally for themselves. Well, why wouldn't they not put God first? Just like in D.C. a year ago, a million white people, they come to D.C. They're not there for Jesus. They came for Trump. Don't you think it disrespected God in a great and mighty way that he thought, you son of a bitches would go through all that trouble for this filthy devil, but you wouldn't do it for me and what I gave you in Jesus Christ. Well, Canada, you're doing the same thing. You're going to all that trouble, but you won't do it for God. And you won't do it for the gift that he gave you in, in Jesus Christ. Then you will take your ass whipping like every other nation. God made you promises. God will not break those promises. God will treat you really good and help you, man. But you got to do right by God. And it's got to be genuine. You can combat evil. And we've been given power over evil, but most people do not understand this. Because most people don't believe. They don't care. I'm not saying that all the people involved in this strike are anti-Jesus or the people supporting them are anti-Christ. However, I am saying this directly to you. Because I do understand how the people of this world work. Because my father has taught me. The vast majority of them are godless. And they do not care about the Father, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Word. Now, most of you know that I do not care about the Hitler cult. I don't like these people. I don't like their backward movement called Christian identity. These people are devilish and cowardly, and they're led by evil spirits. Now, they believe that Germany was a total victim in World War II. All right, And Germans did go through some hell, uh, more than they should have, quite frankly. But let's be honest about it. Who's in control? Who has the power? God does, man. If God doesn't want you to go through something, you ain't going to go through it. Let me drop this wisdom and fact on you about God and the Germans as, as we close. And then you can think about Canada, the United States, England. You can think about Scotland, Scandinavia. It doesn't matter. Pick any nation. Pick any white cultured nation. For 12 years or more in Germany, the vast majority of the German people started to believe in the great lie and live the great lie. They seen themselves as superior and they could do anything. Not because of God because Adolf Hitler, an and, and Austrian, okay, of the synagogue of Satan, convinced them of this. They raised their arms and saluted, Heil Hitler! They did not salute Jesus the Christ. And Hitler did give a few speeches about Christianity. So did, he, so did Obama. So did Roosevelt. So did Trump. So did Bush. So did Reagan. So what? It means nothing. And the fact that these poor delusional people actually believe that because this devil mention Christianity that somehow he was a Christian or that the nation was a Christian nation. No, it was not. Hitler was no more a follower of Jesus Christ than it was Trump, Obama, Roosevelt, Wilson, Lincoln, or, or any of the rest of these banking puppets. What was the end result for Germany was this almost complete annihilation. If God did not intervene and have the United States help Germany to get back on its feet. The synagogue of Satan wanted to completely annihilate them and God would not allow it. And he used, a, he used another nation, a tool, the United States to see that it would not happen. This is deep. It goes on to what happened after that, how they wanted to just basically just do away with them. The synagogue of, of Satan did. This same mentality that the Germans had with how Hitler is what the spirit that resides in almost all the Western culture nations. They have grown to believe and live the lie. And what is this great lie? That God, his son Jesus Christ, and the word are null and void. They're not that important or they don't even exist. And that people can make it without God. The fall from this mountain, brethren, is long and painful. Now, what can we learn from this? Well, good people, what we learn is this. We live and we know that we cannot make it without our Father. And our Father gave us his image in Jesus and said, follow him back to me and you will be fine. 
God made you promises. God gave you more power than what you even know that you even have, but you have to believe it. Why do you think Jesus Christ said, look, you can move mountains? You can do things that you do not even think that you can do if you will only believe. But here's the thing. Most folks don't believe. We live in a world, the vast majority of Western culture, the nation and the people have built their houses on sand. Very few of us, and there are some, just a few, we have built our house on the rock. The rock that is the Almighty Father through Jesus Christ. The people that have built their houses on sand, these houses are going to crumble into the sea. And it will be painful. You and I have built our houses on the rock that is our Father through Jesus Christ. Matthew 7, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, and we close. 24, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And now listen, and great was the fall of it. We will endure come what may. Let the rains fall, and we shall live in the house that our Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ, has prepared for his children. So be it.